All right. Perez has signed a new contract, for those not in the know. I'm not here to discuss that contract specifically or whether or not Perez can actually challenge for a championship. My opinion on that hasn't changed regardless since the last video I spoke about him in that context, but I do however want to open a discussion as to what this means for Red Bull's driver's table and how Red Bull have gone about recovering or rebuilding their stable since the exodus of the Daniels and Sainz. So, Red Bull have had to carry a depleted driver's stable since both Sainz and Ricardo left the team, I'm talking about the umbrella Red Bull family here, along with Kvyat not convincing the likes of Dr. Marco to give him another shot in the main Red Bull team. Their succession plan was to have Ricardo and Verstappen be teammates at Red Bull, with Sainz being a slow cooking backup to Ricardo if he so opted to leave for whatever reason. Sainz left to Renault, then Ricardo left for Renault, and Kvyat got picked up by Ferrari to be a simulation driver. This exodus of drivers presented a problem for Red Bull in regards to their philosophy of promoting from within, which is something they still maintain for the following seasons even if it was to their detriment with Gasly and Albon netting promotions to the senior team and Brandon Hartley being retrieved from Porsche's WEC program, likely done as a favour to Helmut Marko who has some Le Mans history with Porsche himself having won the race for them before in the 70s. Gasly proved to not be up to the challenge of the Red Bull pressure cooker and he actually lost his formal in the team, reasons are frankly still up for debate. And in his wake, Albon was trialled in the team but proved to be unconvincing on account of not having the personality for a front running team and being satisfied with 4th place finishes, by his own words he had won his own personal race by finishing 4th. It's academic at this point as to whether or not Albon netting a podium would have unlocked a new gear in him. Likewise, it's only of academic concern as to whether or not Gasly could operate in the team today, as has been proven by Perez being given this contract extension. So what does this new deal for Perez mean for Gasly, Albon, Tsunoda and the overabundance of talent that Red Bull have in their junior structure? Um, well. To me it means time is up for Gasly. I believe his contract expires at the end of the season. Red Bull may or may not offer him a new deal. I expect them not to offer him a new deal. Not sure if that's been reported in the news already, but I wouldn't have expected him to be offered a deal even if it wasn't in the news. Is Gasly good enough to compete in the senior team? Possibly, but it's no certainty at all. And to be frank about it, he is occupying a race seat that a fresh-faced young hotshot could be occupying and gaining F1 experience in. The most likely candidate for that currently being Yuri Vips. Uh, I can see Yasli going to WEC if no other F1 team uh, offers him a deal at the end of the season. Likely to be a Peugeot driver because of the French connection. Alternatively, he could go IndyCar if he is not to stay in F1. His options for staying in F1 would likely be Haas, Aston Martin, McLaren, or maybe a simulator driver role for one of the top teams. Likewise, Tsunoda presents the same problem to Red Bull as Gasly, albeit his is less critical and he might yet come good regardless of his previous or current showings. Uh, it's very obvious to know that it is a political signing by Red Bull to perhaps smooth over negotiations with Honda as a gesture of goodwill by inserting a Japanese driver into their structure. Uh, I personally don't believe he will ever be good enough to race for the main Red Bull team. And I would be surprised if he were to ever be signed by another F1 team. Hasn't convinced me enough with his current time spent in the sport. Maybe he proves me wrong by the end of the season or next season. His timeline at the end of the day will be the same as Perez's contract. So Tsunoda, right now he functionally has until the end of 2024 to prove that he can do a job for Red Bull. Be it in the senior team as a replacement for Perez or be it in AlphaTauri taking over Gasly's role of mentor to the young drivers. Uh, it should be noted that Perez, Gasly, Albon and Kvyat actually break Red Bull's philosophy of promoting driving talent from within their structure. Uh, Perez by coming in from outside the structure, he 
he breaks it that way. Gasly by moving back to the junior team after failing at the senior team, along with him still being there right now. That also breaks their structure. Um, Albon by still being contracted to Red Bull on account of being a favourite of Horner's. That breaks their structure. And Kvyat for also moving back down to the junior team. That was a philosophy breaking for them. Should mention with Kvyat that his demotion was of political convenience due to Verstappen having proven to be a prodigious talent. And interest around him kicking up a gear in the paddock. Uh, also probably Daddy Verstappen applying pressure to Red Bull to get him into the main team ASAP. In the wake of all this driver shuffling and losing what I would consider to be prized assets at the time in Ricardo and Sainz, Red Bull have had to set about rebuilding the driver stable and the signing of Perez last season, 2021, signaled that Red Bull did not have faith in any of the drivers currently in their stable and maybe even the drivers that are part of their alumni who they still had access to such as Callum Eilat and Patricia Ward. Uh, while we're here, I might as well list um, the alumni of Red Bull Academy drivers. And I will be omitting most drivers who have not featured in F1, barring some notable exceptions like a Lamar winner or something. So from the top, Christian Klein, Patrick Friesacker, Vit Antonio Luizzi, Narain Carter Kane, Scott Speed, Neil Yarny, Sebastian Vettel. Sebastian Buemi, Karun Chandhuk, Jaime Alvaswari, Brendan Hartley, Jean Eric Verne, Daniel Ricardo, Alex Albon, Daniel Kvyat, Tom Blomqvist, uh, Max Verstappen, Carlos Sainz, Callum Eilat, Pierre Gasly, Patricia Ward, and Jack Duhan. Alright, so that's their full alumni of um, and notable drivers. There's more drivers in their alumni. They have a really huge alumni, by the way. I should mention that. <laughs> really extensive alumni. I've trimmed a lot of the names to get this list of names. So if you're interested in that, I mean, I, I might leave a link to it in the description or something. You can go check out their full alumni there. Um, satisfy your own curiosity if you are curious enough. Now, Pato Award, he's now contracted to McLaren, so he's likely off limits for Red Bull. Callum Eilat, no doubt, has an ironclad IndyCar contract as well. Uh, length of the contract is unknown at the time of this recording. I don't particularly think it's important for this topic. Along with some other notable talents like Duhan and Blomqvist, uh, having ended up where they have ended up. I know Blomqvist is in is an IndyCar right now. Uh, how good he is, well, how I would, I would actually have to watch some IndyCar. <laughs> Just watch the Indy 500. And, um, and yeah, Colton Herder had a bad race and he's a highly rated talent, so you can't just gauge it off one race. Uh, their current Formula 2 roster, this is Red Bull now, their current Formula 2 roster consists of Liam Lawson, Jehan Daruvala, Yuri Vips, Dennis Haga, and Ayumu Iwasa. Now, Lawson, Vips, and Haga are race winners now, I believe. Uh, Hog is, is perhaps more a formality than others, given the circumstances. So at the time of this recording, he'll be omitted from possible F1 entrance for next season. Who knows, later in the season, he might ignite in some way and start racking up results. Anything could happen. Uh, Daruvula, by contrast, he's flattered to the sea for years now. Um, yeah, he just has flattered to the sea for years now. Ayumu Iwasa is a rookie in F2, I believe, and while he is an interesting talent, uh, he would have to prove to be pretty natural to put himself into the conversation for an F1 seat next season. Uh, that leaves us with Lawson and Vips. Vips having already been given an outing at the Spanish GP weekend. And Lawson still looking a little wet behind the ears for an F1 drive. So assuming that Gasly does not receive a contract extension, 
it's safe to say that Vips will be in an AlphaTauri next season. Now, the question that needs answering is how far away are Red Bull from replenishing their driver stable and being in a similar pos position to before their driver exodus of the, of the, <laughs> of the two Daniels and Sainz. Uh, I would argue they're not that far off now, perhaps by 2025 or 2026 uh, they'll once again have a full Red Bull Academy graduate lineup in both teams and there won't be any repeat drivers, drivers who have been shuffled back down to the junior team although who knows I might be wrong on that, they might have adopted that as part of their philosophy now for all I know all right so why am I making this video to highlight that Red Bull have a knack for discovering talent and to highlight that they have compromised their own unwavering principles in order to put Perez in, into the seat who is for all intents and purposes he's, he's operating as a stopgap all right only time will tell if their stable rebuild has been successful uh, it looks like it's going to be successful to me um, it will come together at some point in the future regardless it's not like it's not like they just will never have a full Red Bull graduate lineup forever. Right? It's, not, it's, not that, it's not like that's gonna be the new stable for Red Bull. Or perhaps I should say the new staple for Red Bull. Uh, but I do consider it worth noting that a title challenge was important enough to Red Bull for them to forego their long-held principles and that they have decided to give a considerable weight to personality scouting after the disasters of Albon and Gasly contextually within the team. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, Red Bull have been rebuilding their driver stable since, uh, since the exodus. I call it the exodus, I don't know what other people would call it, but it was, it was really an exodus of drivers. I mean, to lose three drivers from your stable over the course of <laughs> over the course of two seasons I mean, that that hurts I don't really care which team you are or which pair of teams you are that hurts All right so are they close to rebuilding their stable and being in a similar position to what they were before this exodus I believe they are um, it's most interesting again that they sandbagged Yuri Vips um, in his young driver outing at Spain. It's, it's really interesting. I can't, I can't state enough how interesting that is, to me at least. Because you would assume you're putting a young driver and you kind of want him to, you know, show a bit of what he's got. But anyway, anyway, anyway. I just wanted to um, open up discussion on this. I don't even know if people can discuss it, but I just wanted to open up discussion on this. Um, who do you think is going to be uh, a part of their future stable? I think Sonoda might leave, to be frank. Well, not leave, I don't think he'll be offered a deal after 2024 on account of not having proven himself. Matter of fact, I think if Vips does get into the seats, like I believe he will, I think if Vips does get into the other AlphaTauri seat with Gasly's imminent departure, um, yeah, I think Vips will uh, upstage Tsunoda. Really, he'll upstage him. Matter of fact, I think Liam Lawson would even do the same. I must note, Ayumu Uwasa is a very interesting talent. I am interested to see how he develops in Formula 2. And I'm not mentioning Formula 3, Formula 4, and karting. Um, yeah, and karting drivers that are contracted to Red Bull's Academy. Because I, I have this idea of my own, this philosophy of my own, that, you know, until you make it to Formula 2, as a driver it's probably best to just let you bubble away in the background and not put any of this uh, worldly pressure on any of these young drivers so yeah I'm not mentioning any of these guys who are uh, doing Formula 3 and below because they just don't need that 
one they don't need that two it's probably not even worth the effort because these guys might be <laughs> might either be out of motorsport by next year or racing something completely different they might be grabbed by an indycar team for all we know like Pato award anyway that's the vid peace Breezy, let me show you how to keep the dice rolling when you're doing that thing over there. Hey, 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 let's go. Cause I'm feeling like I'm running and I'm feeling like I gotta get away, get away, get away. Better know that I don't and I won't ever stop. Cause you know I gotta win every day, day. Yo. See, if you really wanna pop me, Yo. just know that you will never pop me. And I know that I gotta be a little cocky. Yo. You ain't never gonna stop me. Every time I come, a nigga gotta set it, then I gotta go and then I gotta get it, then I gotta blow and then I gotta shut it. Any little thing a nigga think that he be doing, cause it doesn't matter, cause I'm gonna dead it, dead it. Then I'm gonna murder everything and anything about it. Let's go. See the way we own it and we all up in the race. And you know we got it going to try to keep up with the pace. And we struggling and hustling and set it and get it.